This is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. And my sister, Cassandra, told me to tell y'all this funny story. So this one is for my sister, Cassandra. This guy here is Rodney. He was selling cane in Highland Park when I was. This is my cousin, Freddie. My cousin, okay? Now, I got this picture from the lady who wrote the book for Courtney, the fat man in the field marshal. She married Rodney and she gave me the picture. So that's, you know, I was thankful to her and I just want to say thank you for the picture and I, I really appreciate it. Thanks and love. I, I really thank you for the picture because that's one of the only pictures I have of Freddie and that picture means a lot to me and I've got to give you a play. She wrote the book for Courtney. So thanks a lot and I, I just want to say, reach out, say thank you to you for the picture. Now, let me go into the story behind that picture. This is the funny story. Freddie was selling cane in Highland Park for Rodney. I'm selling cane for myself at our building, which Courtney Brown Jr. used to call the Carter. I'm going to give you stories from the Carter. You understand? Now, I'm selling cane from the building, and he's selling for Rodney on Florence, okay? So... Freddie is selling on Florence. I'm selling from the alley of our building. I'm out in the back smoking a joint early in the morning, getting high, and they had logs back there that we used to roll on. So I'm back there high in the food, rolling on the logs and shit, smoking weed, cracking up, waiting on customers to come. So Freddie come from up in the alley. Rodney, Rodney lived on Florence. Freddie come from out of Rodney's backyard, walked straight up the alley to me. I'm right here to the right. He walk up the alley, make a right, come right to me. Eddie, what's going on? What's up, cuz? What you doing? If, you know, me and Freddie was family for life. That's my family. I love him to death forever, and he's gone. But anyway, he come up the alley. Now, he smoked crack, man. Let me be honest with you on this story, because it's a funny motherfucker. He comes up the alley, and he say, Eddie, I'm smoking a joint, not getting high. I mean, he's drinking a 40 ounce, you know, down in it, talking shit. Call himself, I'm DJ Killer. That's what Freddie used to call Freddie DJ Killer. You understand? Because Freddie was a motherfucker. I got to tell y'all some stories about it. But anyway, he comes up the alley. He's drinking a 40 ounce of shit. I'm sitting on the log smoking weed. He sit down next to me. He got a little stem, little wire silver thing, little silver off the TV. He done broke the goddamn stem off the TV and made the antenna stuff some Troy in there. He's smoking out of this. So he's sitting down there, smoke crap, smoking like a motherfucker. I'm smoking a joint. He looks up at me and he says, uh, he stand up now. He drank the 40 ounce when he walked up. He looked at me, he didn't hit the crack. He might be to smoke two rocks now. Because when he came up, these some big babies. Ain't they, Jack? I got some big babies. So now he sat down, he smoked two up. He stand up, he got the 40 ounce. He look at me and take a swallow of 40 ounce. He said, Jack. I just got robbed. God damn it. They took everything. God damn it, voodoo. Where is that? I got to go get food. I looked at this motherfucker and just started laughing. It fell on the goddamn log. This motherfucker bleed like a goddamn stuck pig. He didn't bust his own goddamn head taking the sack to rob Rodney for the sack and the money he didn't made from the sack. He took everything. Jack, he got it all. Now he's running back down the street to Rodney. I got to go get food in to get the drugs. We got to go find this nigga, you understand? I like to see him find this motherfucker here because they looking right at it when you tell him what the fuck he did. <laughs> that shit was so funny. I never fucking forget it all the time in my life. Here come Voodoo, Scott of Rock. All of them, here they come. They looking for a motherfucker. Jack, where he at? Where did you, you see him? Jack, where he at? Man, I seen a motherfucker cut through there, but I couldn't see him, you know, because that's family I got to play it for. He cut through there, and I couldn't really see him, and I didn't know he had hit you at that point, so, you know, I really couldn't see him. Now, he performing like a motherfucker for rocking them, and Scholar Rock them, they got their little commando, he got the goddamn little Uzi, he got the 45, oh, they looking for him now. If they catch a case with that bullshit, if Francisco and Quaker and Ponytail and them had pulled up on them with that bullshit, you would have fell out. Like the time Rodney is standing out there selling rocks. Now he's in a wheelchair. He can't get up. He's out there selling rocks like a motherfucker on floor. And guess who pulled up on him? Quaker, Francisco, Axel Foley, and Ponytail. Now he's in a wheelchair. 
He ain't got nothing but rocks. He can't run. So when they get out and Rodney try to roll, where he going? They just get him in the wheelchair, look through there, find the crack, roll him on down there, put him in the car, and took him away just like that. Just like that. And here come Freddie again. God damn it, they didn't got food. They tried to get me, but I told them I had the crabs, and they couldn't put their hands down my nuts and find the sack, and look what I got, Jack. I'm smoking like a motherfucker, man. They got voodoo, man. They got my man Voo. He used to call him Rodney Voodoo. They got my man Voo. So that's just some funny stories, some looking back at some of the times in Highland Park, and I can get you a lot of Highland Park from Ricky Cross, who used to work for Skip, and, you know, it was a lot of kids. Lakeside, they had all kind of motherfuckers running around. K.O. Highland, it was full. Of, Highland Park at that time was the murder capital in the world. B.J., I can remember so many motherfuckers got killed in Highland Park at that time, and everybody used to hang out at the Powerhouse Gym. That was the place to be then. Everybody loved to be at the Powerhouse, you understand? But I want to say peace, love, subscribe, share, link up. Thank you to all my fans, and I'll keep the stories coming. Love.